I know we've always push, 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 give them the door, give them the door, give them the door, but it's starting that conversation and creating that appointment on that customer's time to be able to do that. But I think that's kind of a, a fundamental culture shift for a lot of dealerships. And I'd love to kind of get your guys' thoughts on that is how do we create an appointment culture within our dealership? Glenn, I'll ask you the question, and then Jeff, I'll ask you the same. See, I actually think we're asking the wrong question because that's the problem is that it's, what does the appointment do? Meaning the, the problem in the past was the appointment, we couldn't do anything till you came in here. So I, BDCs or even salespeople, they you know gave them enough to get them to come in to go like, all right, I guess I got to come in to, to do this. Like, ugh, like, why can't you answer my question, right? Literally, and, and to Jeff's point, and, and Brian, my brother and I talk about it all the time is this concept of serve. Like I, I said earlier, like a very simple thing is like, is this car available? And you push it and it's a form. So that basic, so that think about the lot. Somebody said, Hey, Jeff, is that car available? Give me your name. I'll call you tomorrow. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? So we've done this whole thing to just satisfy. We have leads and get names. And then we chase people. We chase people. So now I got to chase Jason about checking availability, but he's moved on. He's now doing something else and now I'm interrupting him and he's like, I don't even want to talk to you now. Why weren't you there when I needed you, right? So the point is the appointment culture, we have to sort of smash the whole thing of saying and break that concept of, well, if I give them too much information, they're going to shop and they're going to go somewhere else. At the end of the day, they're going to do that anyway. But we're, we always design our processes for those 15, 20% that are always going to go bargain hunting. And we've missed the 80% that will pay us more to have a better experience. And so I think if all of what we should be learning is, well, I would ask any dealer right now to say, what did you do when you were closed? If you couldn't have showroom traffic, what did you do to sell cars? Don't stop that. Build on that. Get answer questions. People came in and bought cars. Now, how can you replicate that? How can you expand that so that you can sell more? And then you'll still have people coming in. I just think the idea of an appointment being, let's sign paperwork, do more, fin you know, finagle and find it, you know, is this the right car? Let me quickly test drive this. But we're 90% there instead of we're 10% there and now we got to do that 80% in the middle or whatever it is to, and, and that's where that time, let me pass you over to someone else, right? So to Jeff, to your point, I always use the analogy and people started laughing. Think about when you waited tables, you were a manager, right? I was a manager, I waited, did everything in restaurants. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and going, well, I'm the drink waiter. Oh, Jason's going to come over. He's the specials waiter. Oh, you want pasta? Hold on. I got to go to Jeff. He's our pasta waiter. And someone else is the steak waiter. And someone else is the fish waiter. Well, that's what we do in the, in the dealership. Oh, you have a question about F&I? I I got this person. Oh, you want to talk about used cars? Uh, value your trade? Oh, I got someone over here. Hold on. I got to give you the mat. Like, I mean, we just make the process so complex instead of just saying, now, part of it is the manufacturer. Part of it is all the features. But at the end of the day, we still make it harder instead of saying, can I just talk to one person? One person. Can I do this whole deal with one person? And that's what they're finding out in this, in this era is because managers are doing it more. Top salespeople who can do F&I and walk people through the product, they're going, why do I need 15 people anymore? And the customers go, this was much better. So I think that's where we, we have to go. And the appointment should be closer to just picking up the car than starting a conversation. That's what I think we have to get to. I, I think that's really interesting, Glenn. I think just going straight for, straight to conversation, removing everything, every single little form or gateway or, you know, just get straight into the conversation and the appointment only be in, you know, the, the actual delivery or, you know, finalization of, of the product. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be really cool. I, again, it'd, it'd be interesting, of course, to see, you know, who actually ends well, up. Well, we're doing it. We have, a, we, have, we, have a, right? we do. We have a couple of clients who have done it because we've been coaching them That's through cool. the whole retailing process. They've removed all the forms from their websites and their sales opportunities have gone through the roof. Why? Because now they're having conversations earlier on. And so people don't have to leave and go to another website. 
You don't have to go to the other dealer because when I push the button and ask for get e-price or, hey, tell me about this, guess what? Jeff popped up and said, hey, I'm the manager here. What can I help you with? Lo and behold, like Jeff said, I can start having those conversations, start talking about options, give them options. They now I just start, come talk to me. They know, I like Jeff. I'm not going anywhere else. That, that's true because you get that instant connection. Jeff, um, exactly. your thoughts kind of on that appointment culture and how that may change within our dealership. I think we have to go, what is the purpose of an appointment culture? What is the purpose of having an appointment with a customer? And one of the core fundamental reasons to have an appointment, um, which is the reason to have an appointment culture, is we want more appointments, is that we can be prepared for the customer. I mean, oftentimes I'm in front of dealers or dealer groups and I tell this story. I say, you know what? We knew Glenn was coming in at three o'clock today. So, man, are we ready for him? We pre appraised his tray. We've checked the service history on it. We know which vehicle he's coming in to look at. We've got a couple of vehicles selected, pre selected for him. You know, managers ready to meet him and shake his hand when he gets here. We are ready. We have an opportunity to deliver an incredible customer experience. Oh, but Jason, dang, I didn't know Jason was coming. And at one o'clock, oh, everybody's on their lunch break. Manager's not around. The vehicle he wants to see is in the back. It's not even ready. There's no gas in it. Photocopier is jammed. The photocopy is driver's license for a test drive. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm screwed before I get started almost. Now, that's an extreme example. But you know what, when we do have an appointment, if we see the appointment as my chance to shine, to make the unfun fun, to give Jason an, or Glenn an incredible uh, experience in my store, you know, we can't forget, and I don't think it's changed that much yet, and, and maybe it won't ever change. There's three purchases that happen when somebody buys a car. First, they buy the person then they buy the product and then they buy the opportunity or the deal. Remember the old clothes we used to use, the three Ps? Is it, is it me? Is this the thing I did? Is it the car? You don't like the car price? Is it the price? Person, product, price, or the three Ms, me, money, machine. You know, it was a classic clothes and it, all of us in the business used it thousands of times, but it was based on the three buying decisions. And so I think uh, the power of connection is certainly to, to, to Glenn's point, when you respond promptly, when you're like, wow, that's a great question. And let, let me share some information with you. When you're not withholding, when they don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops, the, you, that helps build that connection. That, and that combined the speed and efficiency with the quality of the interaction and the empathy. My, I bought that person. I want to do business with that person, right? Now they're going to be my guide to help me find the right vehicle. And I'm likely going to trust them when the opportunity is presented financially, right? And again, it's every dealership has their own systems and processes. But if we say that we want to have an appointment culture because we our customers deserve that we take good care of them, right? And then that appointment could be any anywhere along the, the stage of buying that that customer has decided to go with us. All right. So for giving them options on the phone where we can have an exploratory conversation over the phone first uh, and we engage them well and have dialogue. It's all about dialogue. We call them intelligent conversations with customers. You know, and so if we're able to do that effectively, we can have appointments, we can build our entire sales process around appointments, we can set our goals and forecasts around appointments, we can then look at Glenn, you know, what percent of my appointments are going to come from my Conquest digital marketing, what percent are going to come from my portfolio of, of business that I'm working, and we can we have a lot of unique opportunities when we're intentional about appointments.